All right, we should be kicking up now. Roger. All right, we're live now, so let it guess a couple of folks, give it a couple of minutes. We're right at five o'clock right now, so just hang tight for a minute, let a couple of people join. What's up there, Scott, Jessica? Appreciate you guys joining us. So, welcome to today's Thursday afternoon live virtual. I guess uh, art of networking is what we're going to call this one. And today we have three folks with us, myself, Mr. Aaron Withrow and Doc Brannigan. I uh, just wanted to say, appreciate you guys all showing up and listening. I've got a couple of people joining here and hand it over to uh, Mr. Aaron Withrow. who's going to be our moderator today. So kick it off, my friend. Uh, I just wanted to say, appreciate you guys all showing up and listening. I've got a Make sure my volume is corrected here. All right, good to go, Jeff. Good. All right, so uh, really what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the art of networking, something that I've been uh, pretty intimate with for the last couple of years. Um, a lot of the things learned here, uh, truthfully, what uh, have started off the RVBA, the RVBA is a product of good networking. All right, good to go, Jeff. Um, why am I getting feedback, bro? Nope. Keep rolling. Okay. So, um, Jeff, let's hit that first slide, man. So networking is basically getting out there, exposing your business, increasing your uh, network. Like they say, your net worth is your network or your network is your net worth. And that's getting in front of the right people at the right time. So before we get started and before we really start going into the minutiae of what a network is, um, I really put this out there and I believe in this. Not every network um, is good. Not every network that is good is for you. Um, so where are you at in your growth? Uh, where are you at for your marketing? Where are you at for infrastructure? Are you building a team? Um, do you just need to have your brand and your recognition out there? I know last week we talked about brand. That's huge. Um, trying to find the purpose and the goal of the network and making sure that that fits your business model and path is really, really big. Um, I think right now I work for Doc. Uh, glad to have him on here, but Doc is a multipreneur, owns multiple businesses. Each of his businesses has a different uh, mindset, you know, whether it's B2B or we need to be in front of the public. Jeff has a great service and he has his own uh, way where he needs to be in front of his customers and clients. But sometimes that doesn't mean showing up at a Chili's for a cold beer. Maybe he needs to be in front of other business owners. So having the right network at the right time is huge. Um, and, and it is all about wasting time. So I really wanted to hit on that because I think that's going to resonate with a lot of people. Jeff, uh, how much time in your day do you have to waste? Who, uh, do, a you. time to waste in my day? Yeah, just to throw away hours. Man, if I, if I utilize my time properly, I could use all 24 hours of them, to be honest with you. But right. Um, you know, I find myself wasting time getting unproductive from time to time. And I don't know if that's just, uh, you know, being a, a small business, you, you want to be in the right room with the right people. But sometimes, I mean, you're hitting, you're hitting right on the head. Sometimes those networking, if you're in the wrong room with the wrong people, that is a total waste of time. So, uh, but to answer your question, man, if I use my time wisely, I don't have any time to waste. Right. And you can't help it. I think that I'm built with a personality that I want to work for. Um, you see a bunch of people in a room that have needs and you want to start helping and you realize six months down the road, this is not the right network for you, but you put a lot of effort and time into something that doesn't help your business. So then all you're really doing is socializing. And so as we go through these slides, there's a big difference between networking and socializing. I can go catch a beer with people I really, really like. That's socializing. Networking is business-minded, bonding, uh, relationship development. That way you can improve everybody's business at the same time. It is a, it's a web, it's a web of good business. So uh, move on to the next. 
Um, so a few of my personal examples, I'm gonna have you guys each kind of ring in and see where your uh, different areas. I basically kind of break it down into church, work and state. Uh, we don't pass business cards around a church. Uh, for me, my church, that's the American Legion. Uh, I'm a good God-fearing man, but I like to use the Legion because I think a lot of us love um, finding a way to give back to the community. Best way I do that, where I really get passionate, is through the Legion. Um, and that's not a place for business. That's a place for youth development. That's a place for veterans benefit. And um, I take my business to the RVBA. That's my work. So I've got my church, I've got my work, and then I got the state. I put out the Rockwell County Men's Club just to kind of show you that your network can also be in a political. It's a little bit of a different mix. You're not doing direct business, but you're actually encouraging business growth. You're talking about legislation and civil servants and trying to find the right people that will actually get out there and develop your community in the right way. Doc, you got anything to say on church, work, and state? Well, you guys know my pillars, right? It's God, health, and wealth. And so we are a part of a, uh, a network. Every Friday morning, I attend a, a Bible study group. Um, uh, again, at the church, we're, we're part of what's called a life group. And so th that is a network, right? And so when I utilize networks, they have to be able to fuel the fire with inside me. And so if I want to grow my relationship with, with, with my religion, I'm going to use those people that are on the same path. If I want to grow my business with other successful like-minded business owners, I'm going to be a part of that network that's on that same path. If I want to be able to continue to grow and, and put forth in the community, I'm going to find a networking group like the Chamber of Commerce, like the, the Men's Club that are going to promote me and promote uh, other people in the right direction on, on how we want to see our state ran. So it's, it's definitely important to understand what networking groups that you want to be a part of. How do you want it to affect you short term as well as long term? And are you willing to be able to invest in yourself and those groups for a long enough period for you to be able to see those results? Thanks, Doc. Um, so, yeah, like I said, it really helps to have those different types of networks uh, identified before you get out there. But. Uh, what is the purpose of your business? What are you really looking to do? Who are you trying to sell to? Who helps you do the selling? Uh, what is your product? All of those things, that's a whole nother conversation. But if you don't have that identified, you can't really determine what type of network you need to be in. Um, yeah. So who's your customer? Who gives you money? And who do you give your money to? Um, I'll just go ahead and I'll start off. I actually want to ask both of you this because I think it's a really good decision maker. As a roofer, um, I get a lot of really good referral. My money, my source of revenue in a network setting comes from real estate. Realtors need good, reliable roofers. We help them on a day-to-day -day basis. They're out there doing the good work for people that need new homes. A really great source, other than me going out and directly interacting with customers, is having a realtor say, hey, could you do me a favor? I trust you guys. Will you go just check this roof out for me? Yes, I do. Who do I give money to? Trades. I run in a very large circle. For me, it is very powerful for people to look at me as the quarterback of their construction needs. And I make sure that people understand I'm not here to be an expert painter, but I know who is. I'm not here to know and become a master electrician or an HVAC, but I sure got Dan Daly and Ben Northcutt to hook me up if I need that. So I get money from my referral sources. I've identified in my network who's going to benefit me, but also who I'm going to benefit. And I want both of those people there to give a good give and take. Um, and my customer at the end of the day is both the client and the business owner because we do commercial roofing. So Doc, you being a multipreneur, do you mind kind of piping in on uh, USA Mobile drug testing? Sure. So that's that's a whole different breed of networking for me. I would right. never go to a networking group for drug testing that's that's uh, trade specific. The networking groups I attend for for my drug testing company are HR networking groups, human resources. I'm going to Department of Transportation networking groups. I'm going to safety oriented OSHA oriented networking groups Legal. because I have to understand who my target audience is what relationships do I need to build so that they can refer me out to their current clients because those are the decision makers 
So if I'm going to be a part of a networking group, I need to be in a group that's going to have decision makers so that I can promote and excel in business. What about you, Hefe? <clears throat> uh, yes, your question is, you know, what, what networks work for me? Not necessarily what, who, who gives you money and where do you send money out? And what type of a, a business circle do you need to be involved in? We all know that you're really, really good. You're, you're the chair for the RVBA and the chamber has its own unique flavor. And we're going to talk about that next. Yeah. But what, what really brings in the money? And then where does your money actually go out the door? Who are you sending trade referrals, uh, business referrals to? Like, wh what's your flow look like? Well, I'm, I'm in a lot of homes, you know, from consultations through planning and execution. You know, there's a few different right. phases in my business that take place. So I kind of, I do my networking sort of based off of those, right? Some networking is my planning networking. Um, some is my consultation networking. Some is my execution but the, the, where my money goes, um, what industry gives me money, those two questions. So the industry that gives me money is my basic network and referral network. So uh, it, it's, I'm still, honestly, I'll be just, I'll be transparent, man. I'm still trying to figure out what networking really, really makes sense for my business because in my industry, no, I'm, I'm not a necessity, right? I'm a, I'm a want, you know, you want a killer outdoor AV system or you want a home theater or you want a good network. You know, so I'm, I'm still figuring that out, man. As a small business owner in year three, man, I, I haven't really pinpointed and said, hey, this is where my money comes from. Aside from the fact that I know that my money has currently come or not currently, but has been coming from a, a network of referrals. Um, I don't spend little to any money on marketing. Uh, and that's my own belief in some of the ways that I deal with my marketing. But, you know, when I do a good job for you or I do a good job for Doc, and you guys tell your friends, that's where my referral and my money comes from. Where does my money go? Uh, to the Chamber of Commerce, to the donations of where I put into the community, the Legion, the, the CASAs, the things like that, but also to the numerous yeah. vendors that I have that are direct relationships with vendors. You know, I don't, a lot of people have this mindset of AV guys that we just go to Best Buy and we buy their stuff. You know, there are, there are guys that do that. Me, I set my business up the right way. I have direct relationships with my vendors. So when you call or your friends call and you have an issue, I have a dude that's sitting on the other phone getting things done and fixed. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, th th that's the best I can answer those questions, man. Yeah. No, it's, and it's good. Those are really good identifier questions. So just trying to make sure that you're not in a group of givers. Like if you're the one person that's given referrals in a group, which is where your money's going out. You're yeah. giving everybody the business, but nobody's, nobody's there to help you stand up strong. It should be a nice flowing circle within that network. So uh, I like how Ms. Rochelle put in there, DIY networking, do it yourself. I'm all about it. If you really wanna find a network that works, do it yourself, create that network. Start with your friends, start with the people that you work for and with, and start building your own social network. I found out early on with the RVBA, we were all going to the chamber events and we were instantaneously bonded. I remember sitting there with Casey Ashmore and Trace Johannesson and same mentality, same mindset, same drive, passion. Jeff Skinner came along to the, I think it was the very second uh, RVBA. We looked at each other across the room and went, are we best friends? And we went, <laughs> yep. And, you know, it's just something like that, that, um, you know, maybe our fields are at the time, I think I was selling life insurance, totally unrelated fields, but dang it, I was vested to try to help black level AV get off the ground, um, as much as I could. And he was the same way. So create your network, find your key pillar people. That's the Mike Rannigans. That's the Jeff. Um, within the first year of RVBA being formed, um, I identified these two as the right people to take it to that next level. I'm not a business owner. At the time, I had no clue what we were doing. All I knew is I wanted to be in a room with veterans that were like-minded, forward-driving, what I called the winner circle. These guys knew how to get me there. These guys knew how to take other people and get them there. So those are what I mean by pillar people, the strong, dynamic people that live by principles, that have systems in place. Jeff just gave his systems um, on the very first one. I highly recommend you get a hold of him. 
and get that PowerPoint. Um, and then you just, everything else kind of falls in from there. Do you want to be an exclusive group or do you want to be an open group? Do you want to have four or five roofers and a few HVAC guys? I say, yeah. At the end of the day, I live and die by my reputation and my strength to make those relationships. And if some Joe Schmo can walk into the RVBA and get a little piece of business where I couldn't, I didn't do my job right. Or I didn't make the relationship right. Or I didn't pay attention and provide that need for you the right way. Um, and again, finding the need of the group, developing a bond. That's easy. You got to have personality. You can't just show up and expect people to send you money. Um, and then find out where those networks overlap. Me personally, I'm a big player in having overlapping networks. And I do it mostly by geography. Um, here in the Rockwall area, this is hometown. And I can't stress hometown and chamber enough. Um, living in your reputation, by your reputation, fulfilling your word, that's what the chamber really enforces. You can't live in your hometown and be a scumbag. Let's face it. Um, you need to be able to do the right work and live by that right work and or fix that right work. It doesn't work if you do the right job four out of five times. It needs to be five out of five times every time. You need to make it right. That's integrity. Right, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I think integrity is, is probably... I, me personally, integrity and, and transparency is one of the uh, pillars in my business. You know, when I when I meet people, I am what I am. I'm tattooed. I'm bearded. I'm a Texas gun loving guy, but I'm a trustworthy dude. I, I promise and I deliver and I over deliver. Um, you know, Doc and I have talked at length about integrity, and I think we all have. But I mean, I, I'd like to hear Doc's input on developing a bond for growth because he's, he's mentioned a couple of, you know, things that kind of relate to that. So in my experience, um, it's integrity before profit, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I believe in, when you say you develop a bond for growth, like I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to build a relationship with the people. I don't expect me, anybody to just hand me their, their money. Right. And, the, and neither should anybody else. I'm expected to build a relationship with that with that group that I'm a part of. I'm expected to be vested with that with that group, grow that group to the best of my potential. And by doing so, we create that bond. It's an un, you know what I mean? And it may not be um, spoken. And it's kind of like the, the, the military. Right. We all we all joined and we are allowed to talk about each other's br different branches. And that's the bond that we created. <clears throat> and maybe I never even met anybody, right? But if you're outside of that bond, you're not allowed to talk smack. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's the bond we're talking about. And within that networking group. So we're part of Master Networks, RVBA, Roy City Chamber, Rockwall Chamber, um, Mastermind Groups online. So all of those are, we, we create synergy with that. And that's where that bond is supposed to do. You're supposed to be able to create a synergy within your network of people that you can feed off of each other. Because I promise you, I don't always have great days. And when I don't have a great day and I'm down and I'm like, shit, what am I supposed to do next? I'm able to pop into one of these groups or I'm able to bounce to somebody who's been in that situation. And we have built a trust. I can say, man, this happened. How do I get out of it? Or what, what is my best approach to, yeah. to um, reconcile this problem I'm having? And if I haven't created a relationship with any of those people, I have no outlets. I have, no, I have nobody I can bounce those ideas off of. You know, but, you bring up a good point right there because I've, you know, when I first moved back into the Rockwall County area and decided to start Black Level AV, I knew immediately it was business plan, website, networking. None of those three talked about anything about where's the money. You know what I mean? And, and I am a firm yeah. believer. I don't do everything right, but I will sit here confidently and say those three steps were the right way. If you go into any venture based off of greed or money, you're destined. I mean, it may work out for a long time. You know what I mean? But if you're solely driven and solely focused on the money, that's the wrong mindset, man. I, I think the I mindset here with this, this today's topic really is we know that networking is paramount. We know it's important. 
I think what I would like for people to take away from this slide and take away from this discussion is being in the right network and being in the right room with the right people. I think that when, when Aaron, when we called Aaron and said, Hey, we got this for you. We think you're solid. This, this is up. This is up your alley. This is yours. You know, my main focus to him was this isn't about networking because there's so many networking events that go on in Rockwall and, and the Dallas area. We all attend them. If you're in the wrong room with the wrong people, man, you're wasting your time, just like you put on slide number two. And I've been there. I've done that. I've gone to networking groups where it, the, the vibe wasn't there. The, the scene right. wasn't there. Hang tight, because this is probably one of my favorite ones. Uh, Rochelle put out there, when should I give up on a networking group? What are the signs? A great I'm actually question. gonna wrap that up in the end, but I want you to know that is a powerful question and we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about it because there are signs. Talk so uh, the last thing on this slide I really wanna hit is, is there room for mitosis? And that was a big deal with us because at the beginning from the very get go, creating this network, RVBA, um, we wanted to make sure that we could make it to the masses. We wanted every veteran to have a local veterans business group. So um, we created it with mitosis in mind. How, how big do you get before you start saying, hey, Dallas, you guys need to do this. There's already three or four different startups that a couple of us have gone out there and advised. So it's something really good. If you're doing the right thing, people are gonna to wanna to copy what you're doing. They're gonna to want mitosis to create their own cell. What is my mitosis, Aaron Withrow? He's a doctor in some countries, by the way. Yeah, so in third world countries where I'm a doctor, mitosis is the art of bacteria to divide into a separate group. So what you do is you grow and you accept nutrients and you accept energy and get ready to take your body through a transition where you take that one cell and become two, becomes four, becomes eight, becomes 16, becomes 32. Um, Setting the right example for Rockwall to take a veterans group to support each other through brotherhood and sisterhood and help our businesses grow. People are going to look at that and go, crap, I want that. And that means you're doing the right thing. You're helping other veteran run businesses become successful. They're going to want to start to institute that. And you shouldn't be jealous. You shouldn't not want your idea to catch like wildfire because you've got a successful um, process in mind. So I don't want to get too bought up. What is your role within the network? So this is where Rochelle's question comes into it. This is how you identify, are you in a network that's kind of played out? Are you the giver in that network and there's everybody else is a taker? And taker doesn't necessarily have to be a bad term. There's going to be some roles in the network that just naturally receive tons of referrals. Roofers, everybody's got a roof. HVAC. Everybody's got HVAC. I love Ben was the first person that taught me how to put your mindset right. Look out there outside right now. It's Texas. Every place that you see in front of you has an AC unit. There's plenty of business out there for us all. And that's true. So it's okay to be a taker in the group, but you still got to be a giver. You still got to put your effort, your referrals, your time into the group. But if it's just not paying out, you need to start evaluating that. Are you the person that is constantly showing up with five, six, seven referrals a week for other people? Or are you like, like us? We're, we're a good roofing company. We're, we're reputable. We love being part of the, the rock wall community. And, and wherever we go in the network, Dots Roofing is almost branded. The network group is successful because Dots Roofing is successful. We do a lot of business in the community because of our network. So we're carrying that brand face, right? So in the RVBA, hey, why is RVBA good? Well, look at Docs. Docs does a lot of business, but they also put into the RVBA a lot. So does that make sense? Jeff, you're a perfect example. We love having you be the brand of RVBA. Everybody's excited to watch what you did from two years ago till now you're uh, running solidly on black level and you're solid, running solidly in a good way. Your business is growing. And you've always given credit to the RVBA as one of the steps. It ain't the only thing, but as one of the steps, we're happy to take that. You know what I'm saying? As Absolutely. your peers, yeah. we're glad it worked for you. So you're the network brain. Um, and that, that's, that, that goes right back to being in the, the right room with the right people, with the right mindset. You know, there, sure. I've, been, I've been to, I mean, hell, we've been together to other networking groups that we thought were 
um, maybe an opportunity for both brands to branch out and, you know, that didn't work out, you know, so, you know, to answer that request, that question from Rochelle, go with your gut, you know what I mean? It's like when you meet someone, you know, like, you know, right away, either they're, they're a turd or they're a golden star. I mean, that's just my, I got, opinion. I got one quick thing to say. Do you know when an RVBA meeting is coming up, are you excited? Is your whole day a little bit better because you know this evening we're going to go meet up with all of our best friends at RVBA? It's a really good choice. If you're going to your networking group and you're excited to go meet your friends, do some business, grow your business, you're probably in the right group. If you wake up, roll your eyes and go, oh, I got to go to this network meeting, you're probably in the wrong group. <laughs> it's probably, probably not a giveaway you want to go do. I see Mike shaking his head. And Mike, this is for you. I got someone for you, right? Mike is that guy. Hey, Mike, you got somebody that can make some underwater wicker furniture for my pool? I do got a guy for that. Yeah, right? Mike's got a guy. <laughs> I mean, those are, do you need those it. people. And that's your role within the network. And you want that to be your role. Um, Mike's got a couple of businesses running. That means he's running both in the personal side and the business to business side. I'm sure he's got a guy. And if he doesn't, he's got the guy who's got the guy. He's got multiple connector people. That makes him the guy that's got a guy or a girl. And so anyways, um, Jeff, Just next. to capitalize on, on, on some of these key points on there, the, okay. the brand and, and, you, and you got a guy. Um, <clears throat> networking brand is, is extremely important. It's got to be able to promote who you are, what you're about, and what your network is is ultimate functionality of it. Um, we know that the RVBA, it says it in its name, the Rockwall Veterans Business Alliance. It aligns businesses with local veterans. Like it's in the deal. You have master networks groups. They That name leads me to believe that they are superior in networking. So I want to go there. Um, we, we go on to another one that I, that isn't, I didn't really have a great vibe from it, which was uh, BNI. Um, I thought that was a money-driven uh, networking group. And that's not what I want to be a part of. I don't want to have to be a, in a pay-to-play uh, networking group. And you can you can get yourself caught up into those things and dealing and, and just basically hemorrhaging from the pocketbook because you just want to be so a part of something that you assume that is so great that you never really reap the benefits or the rewards. And, and so... <laughs> Whenever choosing a networking group, I always will encourage to go to at least five of those networking events uh, prior to giving up on it. I mean, really sink your teeth into it, give it an opportunity, and understand that you are the new guy. You have to be the FNG for a little while because you have to build trust with those other people that have been in that networking group a lot longer than, than I have. And once you get that time and grade, once you uh, you start being that someone to go to, I know a guy, and you start getting that label, then you'll start taking on a bigger role in networking. And that's where networking really starts to become fun and it starts to become rewarding. And you see those benefits that that you were after the, from the get-go. So trust you me, know, that's a lot that, of networking. That, to add to that real quick, it, that's when I – started realizing the power of networking. Like I've always been a people person. I've always been to, you know, go hang out with the guys, blah, 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 whatever. But it wasn't until I realized that if I take what I need out of networking completely out of the equation, that's when networking starts, right? right. When I'm not going there for me, I'm going there for others. And, you know, now I have people like you guys call, Hey, you got a guy for this. You got a guy for that, blah, blah, blah. When I started putting the pieces of the puzzle together for other people, that's when the network started working for me. So, and, and by finding those, those people in the right rooms, that that's, man, that's, if you're just starting networking, which I doubt most people are that are watching this, but just as a, a re, you know, refresh your memory, stop and think why you're networking. You know what I mean? What, what, why are you going to that networking meeting? You know, like Withrow said, is it exciting? If it's not, then don't go to it. You know what I mean? Don't put yourself in a position where you show up and you're in a shit mood because that defeats the whole entire purpose of being there, right? Go there selflessly 
and provide, you know, a, you'll be an asset. You, you it's going to work for you. Yeah. I'll wrap it up. And then Jeff, you can close this all out. Cause I know we're getting the time. Um, you're just going to run into them. You're going to run into that group that you show up and it's just a room full of hungry, hungry hippos. The marbles are all out there. And everybody's just like, they think they can just show up, fling a business card like a ninja star, and business is going to come to them. You want out of that network as fast as possible. There ain't nothing for you in there. That yeah. means that somehow this group has been allowed to grow where nobody has benefited. Nobody's putting in the time. Nobody's putting in the effort. Nobody's, like I said earlier in one of the slides, nobody's trying to figure out where the mitosis or the next level is. It's just biscuits and gravy, um, superficial, passing out a business card. You'll never see any of that business again. Real effort, real relationships is where your network thrives. And so I'm going to throw a real good shout out. The Chamber is absolutely 100% my favorite network because it's where my flag lives. I plant my flag here. I live here. I eat here. I support here. I love here. I did two deployments. I came back to here. This is where I wanted to spend the rest of my happy, happy life. And in order to do that, I have to be successful. And to be successful, I want to be successful to my family and to my neighbors. So that's why I love the chamber. That's why I feel that the chamber should be your starting point of network. And then find another network that is synergistic with that network and slap it in there. RVBA. Um, with a large nationwide network of learners. I have to have a network that teaches me as I grow, someplace where I'm doing business development. Um, I'm a big fan right now of a lot of podcasts. So there's tons of networks out there. So I'm not here to fluff up other people's networks because there's great ones out there. But I don't think that you really can move forward without starting with your local chamber, without saying this ground is mine. I will defend this. And that's for me, that's the chamber. Effective networking group that has a solid foundation that's been in the, that's had skin in the game for a lengthy period of time. It's hard to start if we didn't have the chamber supporting our ideas and our and our goals and our and our foresight with the RVBA. I don't think we would have been able to grow as quickly and as successfully as we've done without the support of the chamber because they are, they were the foundation of it. Yeah. Uh, because we go out there and we try to form our own networking group by ourselves, It takes time. It takes energy. It takes effort. It takes money. And people are going to be like, damn, another networking group, another, you know, right. So yeah, you have to have that, that consistency and that branding um, goes a long way. That's why master networks is successful. That's why BNI is successful. That's why networking groups that spin off of chamber chamber groups are successful because they're, they've already created a, a synergy and a, um, a process and a system that, that works. And so Agreed. find those networking groups that, that have sustained the test of time. Um, and you'll definitely find value if you allow yourself to see the value. Yeah. And, and, and in closing here, you know, the Rockwell Veterans Business Alliance is a group of veterans and patriots. So Absolutely. If you're watching this or you share this video or you run across who the heck is RVBA. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, we started 2020 with the understanding that we understand veterans are 1%. That leaves 99% assets out there to help us grow. And if the RVBA isn't for you, hey, good to go. We're a different breed. We get it. There's the Young Professionals of Rockwall. There's the Senior Services Alliance, the other chamber affiliates that are out there. We just urge you to get involved with one of them because the moment you start getting involved and you're doing it for yeah. the right reason and you're using some of these these networking tools that you learn from us or from other people and you go in there with a selfless attitude, that's when networking works for you. So that's, and that's a great point, Jeff. Uh, I, I'm just, I got to give you kudos. If the RVBA, if America and veterans are not for you, move your ass to California. Cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow your roll. Slow your roll. <laughs> <laughs> Slow your roll. But he, he's definitely right, because without the support of our patriots, without the Absolutely. support of, of the other people out there, we as business owners cannot be successful. Without other people saying, yeah, we got your back, then they were never going to be covered. And so we highly encourage you guys to, to be a part, share this stuff. We're only trying to become better so that we can provide a better service to you. Absolutely. So thanks, gents. I'm out of here.
Judge. Y'all have a good night. Hey, uh, last thing in closing, if anybody's interested in jumping on one of these live Facebook feeds with us, we do them every Thursday at five o'clock. Uh, just doesn't have to be our ugly mugs every week. We got some upcoming people uh, we got invited that we're going to bring in. But if you're just at home and you want to bring some value to this group, give me a call. Give me a ring. You know how to get a hold of us. Check out our Facebook pages, the RBBA page or whatever. And uh, y'all go kill it for tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Hustle like it was Monday. That's right. That's it, boys. Y'all have a good night. See you, Jeff.